a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive. This one is part 59. After turning the flange fittings for the saddle tank water balancing pipe, it is time to drill another hole in the tank and make the water bypass fitting. This water bypass fitting is very similar to the ones you see here, but smaller and double ended. The first thing to do is drill another hole in the tank and I don't recommend you do it this way, as you can see the drill is sliding all over the place, it's too big. It's a much better idea to use a smaller drill bit. Why didn't I use a centre punch? Well I didn't want to put any pressure on the thin sheet metal that the tank's made from. But as you can see with this drill bit it's far too big and it's impossible to get it to settle in the centre of the cross. On the other hand, if I use my Proxon motor tool fitted with a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill bit, it's a very simple job. Note to self, when drilling holes in pieces of sheet metal like this, hold the drill very securely, don't let it wander about. It wandered once, but now it's under control, and after drilling the 1 8 of an inch diameter hole, I enlarged it with a quarter of an inch diameter twist drill. I need this hole to be 3 8 of an inch in diameter, so here I'm going through with a 3 8 drill bit. I could have used a hole cutter but this is simple enough and I wanted to show the principle. Hole cutters are really good for cutting through sheet metal but not everyone has a set of hole cutters. That is why I showed the drill bit method. Here I'm using a deburring tool to clean up the edges. But because I cannot get it at the correct angle inside the tank it's not deburring very well. I know I'll try a different approach. Here I'm using one of the countersink drill bits that I recently bought in a set and to be honest I am not impressed with this. I'll try using them in the drilling machine and see what happens. But a drilling machine is no good for this job, it has to be a portable hand tool. In the end the countersink method was so poor that I used my excellent Proxon angle grinder. This made short work of the burrs on the inside. Now I need to make a fitting similar to this but double ended. I could use one of these, but that would not be a good idea. I need to make a smaller version of this flange fitting. By the time I've fitted the centre section of the tank in place, using lots of 5BA bolts plus silicone rubber sealant, these fittings will become a permanent part of the tank. In the next episode I'll be drilling four holes in every one of the flanges and mounting them to the tank. The method used for making this water bypass fitting is very similar to the method that I showed in the last video, although there are some subtle differences. And I'm only making one of these fittings, not two, as before. I turned the centre part down to 3 8 of an inch in diameter and then centre drilled the end. And now with the live centre fitted, I'm parting off the component. The problem is that the parting tool is not long enough to get all the way to the centre. So the answer to that is to cut off the last part. For this I am using a hacksaw, but there's a warning here. When hacksawing in the lathe, always put a piece of wood or something to protect the bed. I didn't do that, I just angled the hacksaw so the top hit the work. A piece of wood on the bed is the best method. Now it's time to turn the other side of this fitting. The work is held in the chuck by the 3 8 of an inch diameter part that as of yet I haven't threaded. In no time at all I reduce this end down to 3 8 of an inch and the micrometer confirms that. Here I'm thinning out the flange to the same thickness as the two that I've already made. I'm centre drilling the end of it for the taper cone on the pipe and now it's time to use my special die holder apparatus to cut the thread on this end. You can see how it works, it's a standard die holder and I chase it down the work using the tailstock chuck to keep it all square. I'm not putting much pressure on the die holder, I'm just following it very closely. The last part of the job at this end was to clean up the end using a lathe tool. The union nut fits on the thread without any shake and the coned union is a very good fit in the centre drilled hole. I think it's time for a workbench clean up which is well overdue. These brass particles are quite sharp. I can confirm that because there are a few of them stuck in my fingers. It's worth mentioning that the phosphor bronze chippings are even sharper. Here's a comparison showing the two types of fittings 
The flange diameter is exactly the same on both of them. The 3 8 of an inch diameter hole that I drilled was exactly 3 8 of an inch and my fitting is machined to exactly 3 8 of an inch so it was a tight fit. That's why I'm enlarging it slightly with a hole cutter. Here you get an idea of what it's going to look like when I loosely hold the parts in position. I see quite a lot of tank locomotives with a real array of piping leaving the saddle tanks. I'm trying to make it so that this one only has three connections. Two for the balancing pipe and one for the water bypass pipe. The flange on the water bypass pipe will be drilled and bolted to the tank. Here I'm fitting a union nut on the inside. A piece of quarter of an inch copper pipe will connect to this union nut and the end of the pipe will be visible if you look in the hole in the top of the tank. And that is because if you open the water bypass tap fully, you'll be able to see the water coming out of the pipe to confirm that the pumps are working. And that concludes this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.